Hey everyone! Multiple UV maps are handy if you want different parts of your object to have different levels of detail, or you have a bunch of different textures that you want to composite together. For an example, I have the Master Sword here with a bunch of rune options. Using multiple UV maps is nice in this occasion since I have two relatively small textures, and the runes will keep this level of detail no matter how small I make them on the sword. Also, I can change the rune's appearance without having to create a completely separate texture for the entire sword. We'll cover how this material is set up at the end, but first let's go over how to composite images together and how to make use of multiple UV maps while doing so. Let's real quick set up our scene for working with textures. I like to switch my color management from filmic to standard so that our scene reflects the true colors of our textures. And as always, when working with materials, turn on the Node Wrangler add-on. Although typically I'm a default cube conservationist, for this example I'm going to delete it. Let's add a plane and go into top view with numpad 7. Since we're in Eevee, we should be able to stay in rendered view without any performance issues. Now let's head into the Shader Editor in the Material tab. Click New here to create a new material. Switch from Principled to Emission. Emission shaders are the way to go when editing textures. With the settings we're using, this color should be exactly the color on the plane. In order to work with UV maps, we're going to need to set up a material that allows us to layer textures using their alpha channels. It's pretty simple. All we need is a texture with an alpha channel and a mix RGB node. For this example, I want a solid color background, which we can choose by selecting a color on the mix node and setting the factor slider to zero. The factor slider determines how much of each color input is shown. At zero, it shows the top color, at one only the bottom, and then everything in between. It's important to note that you could also use a texture or an RGB node for the background. Nodes are pretty versatile. Now let's connect our texture's color to the second color input and the texture alpha to the factor. And this is the basic setup for layering textures with alpha. We can layer multiple textures on top of each other by daisy chaining mix nodes. You can duplicate the existing nodes with Shift D. Here's an image that I made for our Kakashi tutorials that I'm going to use. I want to be able to adjust its scale and position separate from the rest of the image. To do this, we need to make use of multiple UV maps. Switch into the Object Data Properties tab and open up the UV Map dropdown. Here's our default UV map. By clicking this plus sign, we can add another UV map. You can rename your UV maps over here. I highly recommend it so that you can remember which UV map is which. To use these UV maps in combination with our textures, add a UV map node, choose a UV map and connect to the vector input of the corresponding texture. Now that the UV maps are set up and in our material, we can switch over to the UV editor. Open up whichever image you want to edit, and make sure you're selected on the correct UV map. Go into edit mode in the 3D viewport, select the entire plane with A, and hit U to bring up the unwrap menu. Choose project from view. Select all with A down here as well. Now we can scale, rotate, and move our UV map to position our texture wherever we want on our plane. If we scale our UV map up a lot, we can see that the UV maps repeat by default. Sometimes repeat looks pretty cool. But if you want to turn this off, go back into the Shader Editor and change the setting on your texture from Repeat to Clip. We can adjust any UV map anytime we want. It's best to make sure you have the image you're currently working with active in the UV Editor. Otherwise, if the aspect ratios of your image vary at all, the image will skew as you rotate it. Now I'm going to use another texture with alpha, but this one I want to divide and place in separate areas on the plane. I want half of the text at the top and half at the bottom. First, we'll need another UV map. Next, let's alter our plane slightly to give our UV map a little bit more versatility. Use Ctrl R to add edge loops to the plane, create divisions wherever you want. Make sure that the texture has its UV map node connected to it. Go back into the UV editor and switch to the image that you want to divide up. If you select all in the 3D viewport, you can see the cuts in the plane represented in the UV map as well. Switch the face select up here, and in the 3D viewport, select the faces that you want to adjust. For this center part, I want it empty, so I'm just going to scale it down and move it to a blank spot on the texture. Now I'm going to get the other two faces where I want. So that's how you can really easily separate an image into multiple parts. If you plan on adjusting a previous UV map at this point, make sure to select everything in the 3D viewport so that it all moves together. Sometimes you might run into a situation where you have a texture that doesn't have transparency, but you don't want it to fill the entire plane. I'm going to add this texture to the material real quick. I want it layered behind the text, so I'm going to mix it in before the text nodes. Again, create a new UV map and connect the UV map node to the texture. 
Unlike with the text, we can't just move parts of our UV to an empty spot on the image, because there are no empty spots. But if we have our texture set to clip, we have a solution. Switch to the UV editor and open up this new image. As you can see, any area that's outside the bounds in the UV editor is now transparent. So we can scale and adjust all of this UV's faces together, or select and adjust them individually. And the great thing is, we can go back and adjust anything at any point. If any UV map gets messed up for some reason, just select everything in the viewport and re-unwrap with U. Using multiple UV maps is not only fun, but extremely useful for texturing objects as well. Like this Master Sword example. Here's the sword's main UV map and texture. If we switch to the second UV map and texture, this is what it looks like. All the non-rune faces I've scaled down and put in between the runes. In the shader editor, I have the location of each group of runes set up here, using method 2 from how to animate faces. Since our rune texture is divided into 5, I've got this set up to adjust the Y location of the UV map by steps of 1 -fifth of the image. I didn't want any semi-transparent rune pixels, so this greater than node makes sure we're only using 1s and zeros in the factor, since the greater than outputs are boolean values. Down here is a simple shader set up to emulate Breath of the Wild's lighting. Here's a geometry node I set up to act as a driver for these value nodes. This value lets me change the visible runes on the sword, which I find easier than using a rig or an empties location. There are just about a thousand ways to build anything in Blender. Just as a proof of concept on how versatile Blender nodes are, I set up a node chain that does the exact same thing as here, but is much simpler. Over here we can change the color of the runes. You can honestly do pretty much anything with Blender nodes once you start to figure them out. I highly recommend just trying stuff out and playing around with them to see what you can come up with. Thanks for watching, hopefully you find this useful. Subscribe! If you enjoyed the video, leave us a like. Let us know if you have any questions or suggestions. If you'd like to help our channel grow, share our video. We also have a Patreon if that interests you. Thank you again. Stay safe. I love you all. Goodbye.